Welcome back, riders. Today we have number 19 for 25 Days of Coasters. We have another Rocky Mount construction coaster, and unlike Steel Vengeance, this coaster is more small to mid-size. Despite its size, though, it's extremely powerful. Today's coaster is Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. Storm Chaser is located at Kentucky Kingdom in Louisville, Kentucky. Just like Steel Vengeance, Storm Chaser was a Rocky Mount construction conversion. Twisted Sisters, shout out D. Snyder, later renamed Twisted Twins, another shout out to D. Snyder, were dueling wooden coasters that opened in 1998. Twisted Tins was actually built using steel supports, so I guess it was a hybrid, but it was a wooden track, so pick your poison, whatever. That ride closed in 2007, and it actually wasn't until 2016 when Storm Chaser opened using much of Twisted Twins' structure. Storm Chaser stands 100 feet tall and features a barrel roll down drop as its main drop. The coaster reaches a top speed of only 52 miles per hour and features two or three inversions depending on who you ask. Storm Chaser is 2,744 feet long and I've spent about three hours at Kentucky Kingdom in each 2021, 2022, and 2023 and throughout those roughly nine hours total, I have 21 lifetime rides on Storm Chaser. Just a quick fun fact, Storm Chaser was actually my 200th credit, so there's that for you guys, fun fact. Um, all right, Storm Chaser really begins with the drop. As I mentioned, the first drop is actually an inversion. It's a barrel roll going down. It is certainly unique and overall a good drop, don't get me wrong, but I do prefer RMC's more traditional drops. Immediately after the drop, though, is one of the best moments on any coaster, at least in my opinion. On paper, it's just an airtime hill. Nothing unique. But this airtime hill is an absolute powerhouse. It is sustained ejector. And in my eyes, just one of the best airtime hills out there. The power, the like duration of the airtime you get, it. I love this hill so much. From there, the train navigates an overbank turn. This is a very steep overbank. And I assume this is the element that sparks the debate as to whether the ride has two or three inversions. Either way, this is a good element. It's a fun way to turn a coaster. From there, you enter some kind of off-axis airtime hill that leads into a turnaround. This gives great airtime on the airtime hill. And then the turn that follows it produces some great positive forces. Following the turn, you enter another off-axis airtime hill. Again, this produces some awesome airtime. From there, you enter another overbank. This one not being as heavily banked as the first one, but honestly, it's still a fun element in my opinion. After that, you navigate a traditional airtime hill, so not off-axis, just straight up, which just like everything else on the ride gives some great sustained ejector. Then you navigate the copy and paste RMC zero G roll. Although the entrance and exit to this one kind of makes it like a cross between a zero G roll and a corkscrew. So this one is slightly above average, but it's still not entirely unique. From this point on, the coaster is considered to have polarizing opinions. After the zero G roll slash corkscrew, the ride enters what Rocky Mount Construction named the Trick Track Double Up. This gives two off axis hills the first one to the right and the second to the left while going uphill. These give more abrupt pops of air time that some people find uncomfortable. They're not really sustained moments like everything earlier in the ride up to this point. Personally though, I do like this element. I think it's better that they are off axis rather than just being straight level airtime hills because after the trick jack double up is a traditional double down. So you know, those aren't off-axis, they're just level. So I think it's kind of good to mix in two off-axis with two regular ones. So, you know, that's four airtime hills with quick pops of ejector. Some people think it's a little too much. And I partially agree with them, but not for the reason you would think. Like I said, I do like this element. But for whatever reason, the seatbelt buckle usually starts to hurt me during this sequence. Like, just kind of like where it lays and hits like my belly or waist, whatever. I'm not really sure why it's this part of the ride, but it seems like every other ride I get, 
I just kind of have some pain with where this seatbelt buckle is. But in, I digress. It's really the only RMC I have a problem with the seatbelt with. I think it's worth fighting the pain. Sometimes it doesn't happen at all. But, you know, aside from the seatbelt, I actually enjoy the forces of the sequence. From there, the coaster is running on fumes. So it navigates a helix and some kind of wannabe wave turn, you know, overbank turn. And then it just heads into the brakes. So overall, Storm Chaser is a fantastic roller coaster. I like that it's mostly focused on airtime, but it comes in two different forms of traditional hills and off-axis hills. There's also some good overbanks and inversions thrown into the mix as well, which helps it rank in the top half of my Rocky Mount construction coasters. As always, I will link Canopy Coasters review for a better analysis and definitely better footage. Sorry, I only have a small handful of photos for this one, but that's all I got for number 19 of 25 Days of Coasters. Have you been on Storm Chaser? Tell me what you think about it in the comments below. Hope to see you all tomorrow. Push down, pull up, exit to the right. Hope you enjoyed the video and go have your greatest day yet. Choo-choo, bye.